Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Creekside Nursery and Gardening with Creekside. Uh, Jenny's off this morning, and Meg and I are out here early this morning. You might be able to notice we've got the lights on in the greenhouse, and we just we got down here really early. The nursery opens in about an hour or so, so we wanted to get a video out to you real quick. Today we're just going to do a real quick tour of the garden center and take a look at several different plants right away. Um, I've got uh, I, Jenny has been talking about this holly over here for several weeks, and I just wanted to take a moment. Yeah, you, know, you might ask, where is Jenny at today? I know everybody's going to be comments. You know, she ran off. Our daughter, Emily, our oldest, is, is 18. Well, she'll be 18 this month. And, you know, next year she goes off to college. So they're taking some visits today. So, But I want you guys to get out here and get involved with this holly. This is the, the Oakland, Golden Oakland Holly from Southern Living. Now just look at that beautiful yellow foliage. I mean, it is fantastic. Y'all need to get out here and get some of these because Jenny has been eyeballing these and she's going to put them in the garden somewhere and we need to get these in your home and get them sold. So that one there gets about, you know, 15 by 15. It's real easy. It can be a little bit taller, about 20 feet tall, 15 feet wide. So it's necessarily, it's a more compact version i would think of just your regular nelly stevens holly that you find on the corner of houses we rip those out all the time at different homes and when we're doing landscaping and different landscapers have put those in on the corners of houses and they just really don't belong there they belong out in the border for screening you know like if you want to screen away your your neighbor maybe you got a neighbor or you just want to have a a nice fence or green fence you know and Nellie Stevens hollies are really good for that you could probably mix in the golden holly in between you know Nellie Stevens for a screening like that but if you're looking for a pop of color and you want to put it something on your corner of your house or the back corner of your house I would go with that uh, Southern Living Golden Oakland Holly I think it would be a real good pop for you um, along with that, in that same kind of realm, a pop of color, we talk about sunshine and the gustrum all the time. So, we use these on the borders. We just planted some this week at my brother's house. We use just a couple little accents of this, this color on the corners of a dark, it's kind of like a dark brown house, so it just really popped off just like it does on this brown pot. Um, we love this plant. We have a few of those ready to go. Probably about best kept. It says six foot tall on that thing. No, I would keep that thing around three foot tall to four foot tall. You want to prune that at least once, one time a year, maybe, maybe twice, right? So just to keep it because it really likes to be pruned and, and it will sometimes you'll see it defoliate and it just it just kind of like drops all its foliage and everybody calls us and say oh, my plant's dying my sunshine ligustrum's dying and like no and it's, it, it'll it'll come back so just prune it if you keep it pruned keep it uh, fertilized you know in the spring and then in the fall with plant tone or something like that um, you're going to kind of avoid that also put it in areas where it's not getting lots of water so that water that's coming in on that sunshine ligustrum is causing it to defoliate it stresses its roots it's really weird for a ligustrum but that one's that way so if we can figure that out when we're planting those and putting them in the right place then you'll be more successful with sunshine ligustrum stellar magnolia ruby is so cool because it smells like a banana the flowers literally smell like a banana but it's only six feet wide and 15 to 20 feet tall so what a neat specimen that you could put on your home and i would say that stellar magnolia ruby and look at that ruby color flower that you can get look at that rascal yes i think it's a moderate grower i mean it will it will get there it's not going to get there really quick like a ligustrum or like a hydrangea but it, it's going to go now this plant here that i'm getting ready to show you everybody knows about these brands this is the most confusing thing it's now, this is Fuja, it's an Arborvitae, right, Fire Chief. You'll see it in Southern Living, you'll see it in a Star Roses pot, you'll see it in a black pot. This is a really good one though. I used this this week too at my brother's house. Bronze in color right now. 
Jenny used it in the planter up at the barn right behind the Polaris. In the spring, early spring, probably going to be a little more bright yellow. This is more green, but it will be brighter. But you look at that. I mean, I can just rub all over this guy. He'll stay four foot, three foot. Use it as we use it in the back of his house and the um, foundation of the house per se yesterday when we were there landscaping. Now, I would say in the Charlotte, probably Charlotte area here, we're probably one of the only ones that have this shrub. So I'm growing more of them. I probably have another hundred or so up there growing. This viburnum from Proven Winters. This is yin and yang. And you may say, what in the world? Yin and yang. And so I'm trying to find a yang. Okay, here's a yang. So great alternative to boxwood. Wide leaf, nice and compact. This one's probably going to get trimmed here coming up uh, later on once we get cool off. Pretty good number of freezes or so, but two foot, three foot, something like that. We have them at our back of our patio. We come off the patio. We have that little walkway that comes up to the, to the arch. Before that, to the left. If you look in some videos when we're doing touring that, right to the left is Yin and Yang by Burnham. And, it, and they don't, none of ours really look like, you might say that looks a little leggy. I would say not. I mean, it, you could just come in here and trim this. It's still in the can, so it's not performing, you know, like it would normally would. But if you put both of those in the landscape, you'll have really cool blue berries growing along the stems. So it's a, that's, once again, it's something unique, but this is way different than per se like a boxwood this is going to be evergreen for us all my southern growers this can only grow for us okay so uh, of our folks up north this one's not going to make it for you in the winter but in the south we have a lot of boxwoods so just come over here with me so you see that leaf it's nice big wide leaf compared to like sprinter boxwood i love this boxwood but this is a neat alternative to this boxwood while i'm on this boxwood let's talk about it a second this is sprinter probably one of the two or the only boxwoods that we really carry we got some green velvet boxwood that's coming in it's a more shorter tight variety um, this one will stay tight if you want it tight and you don't want it floppy i would keep it pruned at two by two okay it can go to four but i would say if you don't want it to be floppy you want it to be tight you want to keep it pruned at two by two so i just told a customer last weekend this is probably our best boxwood i i don't have any problems with this guy right here so out here so right behind us right here megan we have bold lower petalum nice big leaf it has all kinds of lower petals so confusing right so we've got bold we have ever red <laughs> coming over here megan and then we have purple daydream do we have any more of these out here i don't think so all three of those and all three of those lord pelham are just a little bit different so you have this one's really purple this is like the gold standard in two by two small in the front of the landscape we use a lot of these that's probably why there's only one of these left right now we have some more coming tomorrow but look at it right beside bold from proven winners nice big leaves pretty new purple foliage color okay right just a different colors folks really like this one because it has a little bit of a darker purple okay but these are the three we carry i've seen um which i'm really want to kind of try out a little bit is cerise charm from star and roses it's a they say one of the deepest and holds its prettiest purple throughout the entire season so this one is 
putting on new purple from Proven Winners. If you look down in there, it has some little greenish, you know, purple leaves on it and stuff. Um, that's, I guess that's what they're trying to say with the other one is that it stays more purple all the time. I don't know. I haven't grown it. I haven't seen it. I haven't used it in landscape. So I like to grab a few to try that sometime. But anyway, another one. This is, a, we rarely talk about this Lord Pell. His moving night moves. You're like, <laughs> it's really wild. I mean, look at that guy. Variegated, variegated green and white. It's, 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 it's gathering some fall colors. I've never, I have not, I don't know if I've seen that do that one like that. Um, so think about that. I, would, I don't know if I would want this up against my house, but I could easily see this out into the landscape, out into the landscape in the bed, kind of like what we're doing maybe at the berm, right? It's outside with the berm that we're building. And it would be a nice addition to and mix it in with some other color. You could mix it with other lower petalums. You can mix it with candy corn, double spot rias. You know, even just nice, you know, green shrubbery around it. But Night Moves is a unique lower petalum. You're not going to see a lot of it. I like just that different purple, white, green foliage that's all over it. And sometimes it looks uh dark per se um oh my gosh now this is new two creek side we started growing these and this is new from proven winners and i have to look at my tag is the uh, honeysuckle sensation i think jenny may have talked about this one time when we were up there at production but nice beautiful yellow and white blooms um somewhere around 10 feet tall two foot wide right so it'd be a nice trailer for you in your garden in a bed really cool maybe going along a fence you know kind of like what we have at the berm so those are some really cool shrubs oh and it's camellia season right now i mean the camellias are blooming we have got to make it over to the pines because i need to show you some of those that are over there this is October Ruby Magic from Southern Living. This is a really good standard camellia. Nice red blooms on it. It's going to have blooms just, it's covered in buds right now. So you should be seeing your camellias uh, blooming out now and into early or late winter in the spring. So we'll haul that way. Let's, let's go over to the um, the greenhouse real quick and take a look at a few things that we've got going on over there we do still have our specials going for the land and sea and the moms you want to craft some of that we have already sold three or four pallets of that land and sea already so it's rolling out of here so let's get we've got three weekends left this weekend and two more saturdays before november the 19th gets here so those will be our last weekends or last weeks and we kind of take a temporary rest period through december and january we're, we'll be working but we're not going to be open to the public here at the nursery we'll be growing plants doing a project getting the building built um working on some other things we have some really big plans just where we were we got some really big plans for that coming up um so we'll be working on the berm here shortly it should have some videos coming out pretty soon on the berm and the fence we have those plants those foundational building block plants that you like to put in first trees and some big shrubs that kind of stuff so let's go up here and see what we've got we loaded up the other day back in here again in the greenhouse the mom's still look at this beautiful I, we have two of these at our porch uh, coming up our steps, the orange mom, and we Jenny put one of these. They call this thing, believe it or not, they call this pink, and it's purple. So if you ever buy a seasonal mom in the early season, you look at the tag and it says pink, more than likely it's going to look more in the shade of purple. But look at those beautiful go tigers. So anyway. Got our beautiful crop everything looks good there Megan beautiful crop of uh, 
Viola's coming in, the yellow color max from us. We pop those out. New beautiful colors there. Be careful on that. Uh, I think they brought down some nice pansies. We've got a few reds there. Yeah, so this is the blotch mix so that we have available. Blotch, yellows, purples, whites is what I've seen so far. Yellow, purple, white, kind of like a burgundy color there. So right to our right, we've redesigned this entire area with our perennials. For the perennial, I was walking around early this morning, right? This is the sun was coming up and just said, you know, I was thinking the perennials are looking really good right now. A lot of the daisies, the, the, the corabels, the heucheras, the pulmonarias, um, lots of midnight masquerade. It's done blooming, but all summer it had this beautiful foliage. So paired with other varieties of perennials or other types this would make a really nice addition to your perennial garden tall nice beautiful purple flowers at the top of that dark foliage then maybe you use something like a dianthus or something like that below you know that would give you some color we're rolling through heaven, heaven sense is back in We've, we've just got a fresh crop of this and we're bringing them down. They, we've reloaded because we sold quite a few of them Saturday. So if you're interested in that guy, I would get out here. This says when you come in here, it'll say full sun to part sun on the tag. Part sun here in the south. I mean, even shade. Anywhere where we're planting hostas, you know, sun king, ferns. This will be a great addition. Different texture blue flowers coming out of it i mean just gorgeous anytime we bring them in here we have them up front to the sides this this thing sells really fast so the bird houses are still good megan let's um let's go over here work our way out of the greenhouse and go check out these perennials over here you know with the purple violas So out here on the tables, we filled up both of this, this table here with the clear mix on pansies. And then we have a great crop of Echinacea, the Sombrero series. Uh, this is probably one of our top Echinaceas. This one here is Adobe Orange. Look at all those flower buds. So we just had a freeze. We had the early freeze like three days in a row. And it's almost like it told the echinaceas, give me some more blooms. I mean, it, they are just throwing out the flowers all over. So come and grab those and get those in the ground now. Do not hesitate. Do not hesitate. So my dianthus table right here is beautiful. We planted a bunch of dianthus at my brother's house. Carnations looking flower here on this guy. We planted these as a uh, border plant right there super nice this one is fancy it's fancy magenta forget the other one but there's we have three different colors and they're all different shades of this kind of fuchsia looking purple color but uh, hardy hardy perennial for your border this is a, probably the one of the ones i was noticing i was noticing up front at the greenhouse is the daisy maze they're popping back out. If you were here, probably late July, even into August, these were struggling on the struggle bus. I mean, it was just hot summer, lots of watering, beat down. We came through with our little clippers, cleaned up some foliage like this, no panic. It's not dying. Come in here, clean it up. Gave it some fertilizer routine, making sure when we're watering, we're fertilizing at the same time. Beautiful glossy green foliage now. Some are popping out some flowers. Recovery, no problem. Great plant. Still the uh, koofy of me, and they're still rocking and rolling right there. And that's, yeah, Megan, show them that planter there. 
Jenny did. We got the cabbage, look at that. She told you that kale cabbage, it really brightens in colors when it starts to get cold. I noticed the white ones in another container that she did um, the other week. But the mustard, we have sold through like no problem. Ms. America mustard, beautiful plant. Um, it just keeps rocking out the foliage. You can go through and just pinch that foliage back like I was just showing you with the daisy and it will just keep putting on more foliage, right? So let's go over here into the pines, okay? Let's go over here in the pines, check out what we've got going on here. The reason I wanted to get over here was it made me think about that October Ruby Magic they had over there on the shrub lot. We moved some of the camellias over here. Um, look at this guy, Alabama Beauty. So for all my Alabama folks, I had a few folks up from Alabama last week, I believe it was. This is a great looking camellia for right now. I think these are more, this is hot flash, I believe. Yep, or fast flash, hot flash, yes, hot flash. Look at that. Look at all of those flowers. I mean, this is great to put into the shade gardens and different things. Um, ferns, autumn ferns, looking great. We have busted through Mahonias. And this, particularly this uh, soft caress from Southern Living. Um, we sell a lot of these. We went through, I, I would say in the last two weeks, this whole section here was full of them. I mean, absolutely full of these. So we have three left right now. And they have the beautiful, this is their time. They start to flower, you know, into the fall, winter, different times of the year. But uh, just, I think people like it. It just has a different looking foliage to it. You know, it's a little tropical look, bamboo-ish-y look, looking plant, but really nice. Um, beautiful grasses, perennial grasses. Uh, this is the Evercolor Japanese sedge grass. So really bright, and we use it as a border. We were planting a landscape. It's in uh, probably about 30 minutes from here in Gastonia. And the lady has lots of oak trees, poplar trees. It's a really big shady backyard. And she has lots of Lenten roses. That's the first thing I saw when I got back there. Uh, this would make an excellent border in those beds. And if you have big uh, shade beds or perennial beds in your garden, if you have a lot of trees at your house, this will brighten it up. You could pair it with the light green one over here. Let's go over here, Megan, and take a look at that one. Yep, this guy here is really nice. When we put use this one a lot, this is the Feather Falls variegated grass. Um, hanging baskets, you know, would look really nice in a hanging basket, the border of a shade garden, putting grasses out, that kind of thing. People think neg neglect using grasses in their landscape. So anyways, um, I think, I think that might be it uh, for today. Um, uh, Jenny will be back on the show for next week, <laughs> but uh, well, not next week, but tomorrow probably. So in the next days, this should come out next day or so from today. And we'll get this uh, guy rolling. But uh, thank you for being here and then we'll uh, check you on the next one.